Tonight, we continue our investigation of the opiate epidemic, which is taking more than 80 lives a day. West Virginia, which leads the nation in overdose deaths, is fighting the epidemic in court by suing six national companies that distribute painkillers. Here's Jim Axelrod. This is what the opioid crisis looks like in West Virginia. People addicted to pain pills, lining up on foot and in cars at a small town drugstore to get their prescriptions filled. In 2014, almost 19,000 people died of an opioid overdose, and I'm not talking about heroin. Joe Ranazzisi was with the DEA for 29 years. He says wholesale drug distributors play a huge part in the epidemic. If a pharmacy was ordering 5,000 tablets per month over a series of months, that's not a big deal. But one month he orders 30,000 tablets. And then the following month he orders 60,000 tablets. And now he's up to 100,000 tablets. Well, the wholesalers were seeing this and no one was filing suspicious orders. They have a legal obligation to report the suspicious patterns to the DEA? Yes, and they weren't doing that. During the last 10 years, the DEA has brought 12 civil suits against drug wholesalers for breaking that law. McKesson, the nation's largest drug distributor, is at the top of that list. The DEA, along with six states, sued McKesson in 2008 for supplying hundreds of suspicious hydrocodone orders to rogue pharmacies. McKesson settled, paying more than $13 million in fines and agreeing to closely monitor their pill supply. Even after we charged them civilly and took civil fines after them, even after they had memorandums of understanding that they knew what to do now, three years later, they started violating the law again. This time, the wholesaler paid $150 million in fines and had distribution centers suspend operations in four states. In your view, was the pursuit of profits outweighing compliance with the law? Yes. A civil penalty of, you know, a few million dollars or tens of million dollars means nothing when you're making, you know, potentially billions of dollars. Now, in a potentially precedent-setting suit, West Virginia is suing McKesson. Records reveal in a five-year period, the wholesaler delivered nearly 100 million opiates to a state with 1.8 million people. The suit alleges that while West Virginia was drowning in painkillers, McKesson continued to incentivize sales with bonuses for the sale of oxycodone and hydrocodone. Last winter, we traveled to this small Appalachian town where we found Tug Valley Pharmacy, which until January was supplied by McKesson. Hi, are you Mr. Ballinger? I'm Jim Axelrod with CBS News. We discovered that pharmacist Randy Ballinger is facing several lawsuits for negligence, admitting to filling 150 pain pill prescriptions daily for one clinic alone. You're named in a lawsuit alleging substandard care. You have nothing to say to me directly. McKesson terminated its contract with Tug Valley, but only after learning about the charges from our CBS News investigation, raising the question, why hadn't the company discover that on its own. They see the tragedy that's happening with these drugs. Why won't you be a good corporate citizen and pull back? One day it could be one of your neighbors or God forbid one of your kids. Why wouldn't you do that? As for McKesson, the company issued this statement, quote, while we don't comment on pending litigation, we share the view that the substance abuse epidemic is a serious problem and we will continue to work with our supply chain partners in support of prevention efforts. Charlie? Thanks, Jim.